Hi, I'm in the process of creating some drawer fronts for some shop cabinets that I have. I've uh, the shop cabinets I've had for a while, but I'm finally getting around to making the, the drawers. They're plywood drawers, but the cabinets themselves are made from uh, melamine with poplar face frames and trim. So the drawer fronts are going to match the cabinets. I'll be using melamine and uh, pop, quarter inch poplar trim around the four edges. I thought I would uh, create a video to show how I glue my, my trim to my um, sheet goods and then more importantly how I uh, trim the, the edging to be perfectly flush with your sheet goods. Now with I, I use the same process for my plywood uh, sheet goods, but uh, it's obviously easier to do that with plywood because you can you can machine the plywood, you can sand it. With um, melamine, you can't let any of your tools touch the melamine surface, uh, otherwise you uh, you destroy the the surface, and you, either you have to begin again or you have to just uh, put up with something that's just not going to look. Uh, look as good as it could look. Uh, let's see, now the, the process that I follow is that I will cut, in, in this case the, for drawer fronts, I'm cutting the width of the drawer front to be the exact, the final width minus, minus my uh, dimensions for my, um, my trim. So this is half an inch, so my, my um, drawer front is was cut half an inch shorter than the final dimension. But for the length, I leave that long. And um, that's about somewhere between an inch and two inches. I can't remember that I've um, left this long. The reason is that if I glue this, if I glue my edging on like so and let it dry, now I, before I apply my edging here, obviously I have to uh, trim this. So I'll, I'll cut this with a saw and then I'll, um, I'll, I'll take my block trim, block uh, plane and uh, trim trim my edging. But of course I have to be perfect. I, when, I, when I'm trimming this it has to be exactly uh, 90 degrees. I have to manage to do that with my block plane and I can't uh, disturb this surface at all. If I, if, I, uh, if I don't cut this to 90 degrees, or if I do uh, disturb the surface, then I no longer have a perfectly uh, straight surface here to, to glue up my uh, edging here. And then it, it's just not going to look good. You're going to have gaps. And uh, I want real tight fitting uh, joints. So I glue up these uh, first, let it dry, then I'll take it to my table saw and I'll cut the panel to its final uh, length and then I'll have a perfectly uh, flush surface to uh, apply my, my uh, edging here. Uh, and then uh, let's see, I just want to touch a little bit about uh, the glue up process itself. I always, always, without fail, do a dry run of my glue up and regardless of how many times I'm going to do a particular glue up I do a dry run. I have about 10 of these drawer fronts that I'm, I'm doing. I'll be doing a dry run for each one of those. You want to have all the tools, your glue, your brushes, any, any jigs that you're going to need to position pieces properly, all your clamps. You want to have all that in place. You want to know the sequence that you're going to be following to actually do the glue up. The last thing you want to be doing, from my experience, when you're gluing uh, a project, is to think. When, when you're doing the glue, you don't want to think at all. That's that's just when you're going to get in trouble. And you don't want to find, you don't want to be uh, have the glue on the parts. You don't want to be you want you don't want that to be the time that you find out your um, one of your clamps is broken or that you can't find that fourth clamp that you thought was there, but turns out it's under a pile of wood over there someplace. Uh, so, 
that's uh, just uh, I really encourage you to always dry, do a dry run on your glue ups. All right, next up to the preparation for the glue up. My uh, my drawer front is um, half inch material, half inch material here, and um, now I'm using uh, you know quarter inch poplar, and it's just was sliced off of a three quarter inch board, so that gives me about an eighth of an inch on both sides of my um, my melamine here for an overhang. Now. Uh, How do I get that? I don't want to. I don't want to actually. I wouldn't actually want to apply my edging with the glue and then try and uh, position it so that I'm, I just get the right amount of overhang. Because remember, I don't want to have to think about this process as I'm gluing this up. What I do is I'll take some some um, eighth inch scrap that I have. Put that like so, put my board on top of it, and now when I um, put my edging against this, the surface, I'm guaranteed to have an eighth inch overhang on the top and an eighth inch on the bottom. Now I'm still not done here because my, in this case, this edging isn't perfectly um, straight. It's got some, it's got some uh, bowl in it and plus if I were to apply the glue like this uh, and then uh, work the board get the clamps on and so forth um, this is going to be moving around we all know what happens when we put glue glue on wood it's uh, it gets pretty slippery uh, so again I don't want to be I don't want to be thinking about do I have enough overhang on this top and on the bottom particularly the bottom which I can't see I've had in the past, I've, I've had a couple glue ups where it looked good from here, but eventually when I turned it over, I didn't have enough overhang. Uh, so I, I really don't want that to happen anymore. What I do is I take some uh, small brads and I apply, in this case, I, I apply three on each edge. I'll just um, uh, nail them in the edge and clip off the, the head and I'll have maybe an eighth of an inch sticking above and with the brads in then I can press my edging into the brads and generally it won't be enough to because I, I don't I don't want my brads to be sticking uh, that far out but it'll be enough to generally hold them in place they'll still tend to want to uh, flop out but when I actually put the glue on uh, and then the, these will just want to drop right into the three appropriate holes and I, I know then I don't have to work, think I don't have to do any thinking during the glue up I know I've got about an eighth of an inch on both sides so let me do that right now I'll just uh, Use a clamp here so I can keep this on edge here. Now I like to use uh, some pliers so I don't whack my fingers as I'm nailing these in. Check which surface I want to be using here. Press it flat against the top, top, and then um, well, I have my 
uh, edging prepared with the brads and I've marked their their approximate length. I'm going to cut off some of this uh, extra material here and um, I just use a, a handsaw here. Of course, you can use um, anything you want to cut off, cut this off. But if I use a power tool, I generate uh, lots of dust in the air, and sometimes it's soothing just to, to do a little cutting with um, with a handsaw. So I'll just finish these off. Okay, I finished the dry run of my glue up. I've confirmed that the joints are tight on the top and that importantly the joints are tight on the bottom too. Now when I did my first drawer front dry run I saw that I had some gaps on the bottom and that was because my board was flush with the bottom of the call so there wasn't the clamping pressure wasn't being applied in the center and that's what that's what uh, these boards serve to do. They bring up the board so that it's uh, centered in the call. Again, that's something that you find out when you do your your dry run. And take this off here. Now um, the edging has those brads applied, so that's why they're they're sitting in there. But they're they're loose, but obviously it's serving their function. They're holding it um, at just the right amount of giving me just the right amount of overhang on both sides. And I have have this um, pre-calibrated <laughs> stack of boards that I'm using for all the drawer fronts. So I just, uh, after I get to this stage, I can just come here, lay them down. That sets it at the right height. Again, at this stage, I don't have to do any thinking. I do this and apply the, the clamps and it's, um, it's done. So uh, I guess I'm ready to actually apply the glue now. That should be pretty uh, straightforward. Okay, I've uh, finished the glue up here and I'll let this sit for at least half an hour, probably be an hour at least before I get back to it and I can uh, move on and, and do other things. I'll just finish, finish the clean up here, glue clean up and, um, and we'll, we'll continue next at the, at the router table. Well, it's been about an hour or so since I glued the edging onto my drawer front and now I'm ready to uh, do the flush trim, trimming. My process is I, I uh, cut a piece of quarter inch MDF and that's sized so that it'll fit, be fit between the edging on the, my smallest drawer front. And, um, and that's just loosely, it's just laying on my, my tabletop here. And since my edging is over, overhanging each side by about an eighth of an inch, I have, uh, there's, there's space for the 
edging to float above my tabletop. So that's, uh, that's the objective of the MDF is to allow my, um, my drawer front to ride freely above the surface. Then I set my uh, router bit. Now I'm using a, a mortising bit for this. You don't want to use a, a, a straight bit because those the front t bottom edges typically are not ground flat um, because quite often they're used for um, plunge routing and um, mortising bits. However, uh, their bottom edges are are ground flat, so you're going to get a much better finish if you use a mortising bit. And you just set the height so that it's just barely below the surface of your MDF. And that's pretty easy to do. You just take a scrap piece of your, um, of your drawer material and you set it over the, the router bit and you raise the bit slowly until it's just barely touching the melamine, in this case the melamine. So if I rub it back and forth, I'll be able to hear a little bit of scratching, just barely a bit of scratching. Then I just back the router bit off just a, a tad, and now I know that um, that router bit cannot mar the surface of my um, of my drawer front. And then for uh, another bit of insurance, is I'll set my router table fence so that my bit can only remove material from my edging, and that's just in case there's some imperfections or some dimensional change in your drawer front that might allow it to dip in a little bit into the router bit. And with the fence set like that, that can happen. And, um, and then the final bit is, is before I actually do the full pass to uh, flush up the edging, I'm going to climb, I'm going to uh, do some climb cut routing, which means that I will be feeding the board with the direction of the router bit first, just letting it remove just a little bit of the material. And uh, when you climb cut, by and large, you don't get any uh, tear out. Whereas uh, when you're feeding the board against the bit, uh, you're much more likely to, to come across some some uh, tear out, which uh, it's kind of hard to deal with when that happens with with uh, edging. So I'll climb cut all four edges, and then I'll come back and with the final pass, remove all the material, um, pushing against the bit. And um, with that, I'm ready to go. That's it. It's, uh, it's about as, as flush as I can expect to get. And there's uh, no damage to the melamine and just some uh, light sanding should be all I need. And uh, next I go to the table saw.
to um, trim the MDF to its final length. Now I have, have this cut to the exact length that I need. Again, minus the, the um, total width of my edging, which is half an inch. And um, again, now I have perfectly flush, straight uh, surface here to glue that edging on. And I'm just going to repeat the process I did before, and this will be done. This drawer front is nearly complete. I have uh, finished applying the edging to the two ends and flush trimmed it with the router table just as I had done with these two and the only thing left to do is to flush up these protrusions with um, these surfaces and I'll be doing that with the combination of uh, handsaw and block plane. And then it's just some light sanding and this drawer front is complete. And that is how I apply edging to my sheet goods. Thanks for stopping by.